What's going on YouTube? Sean here and welcome to day number 25 of my Godzilla rewatch. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, the G-Elimination Project or whatever the uh, full Japanese title is. Yes, yeah, so Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, another pretty forgettable entry in this franchise. And you know, I love Godzilla, but even I have my limits sometimes. This one has a few charming moments, that a few enjoyable moments. Uh, a little bit of creativity in terms of like how they try and get rid of Godzilla but overall it's just not that great of a movie this is kind of one that's forgettable like the only entertaining aspects for me are really kind of the climax and when they try to use the black hole device on Godzilla to get rid of him other than that this is one of those ones that you can just pretty much skip the one after this one though this one I feel like you should watch but like the first two entries in the Millennium series are some of the weakest points of the Godzilla franchise, at least for me personally. The Showa series I can find more enjoyment in, the Heisei series, same thing. But when we start off the Millennium series, we're starting it off not on a really high, strong note. Um, it's definitely like some of the weaker aspects of the Godzilla franchise, which, yeah, there's I definitely have my gripes with this one. So... This one, kind of like 2000, is another reboot that ignores all other previous entries within the franchise. It's... And then, like, once again, you have the same, like, Godzilla suit from the previous film, and it still doesn't look all that great. I don't like the size of his spikes. I, I feel like his dorsal fins are a little bit too big. The face just doesn't look appealing at all. It looks kind of ugly. And, yeah, so this one's in its own continuity. The main villain this time is Megaguirus who is basically, if I recall, just kind of like an evolved form of the Mega Nulon from uh, the movie Rodan, believe it or not, so they found a way to tie this back into the original franchise, although this does not share any continuity with that series, at least to uh, at least to my knowledge, like the continuity in this one's kind of its own thing, but yeah, so the movie begins, Godzilla shows up, we show like that uh, the world has kind of gotten rid of its nuclear energy because Godzilla is attracted to it. And then we get kind of this really dumb opening. Like, we have this main character who, like, something tragic happened to them, like, uh, a few years ago. And, like, they've been, like, working to, like, take down Godzilla ever since. But the military in the beginning is just... It, it just kind of baffles me. They're just... They're going with rocket launchers trying to take down Godzilla. I don't... I know they're probably some super strong missiles or whatever, but... You're going on the ground launching rockets at Godzilla. It's not going to go well. You're going to lose. Like, it was so apparent, like, after they were firing all their missiles. Like, unless you have, like, some sort of weird super weapon, it's just not going to work out for you. But anyway, so the military comes up with this uh, creative plan to take down Godzilla. They create this device, this, like, this black hole device, which means they're going to try and suck Godzilla into a black hole to get rid of him, which is creative. Like, it's like, okay, if we can't do anything with them, let's just get rid of them, launch them into another dimension. However, when they tested this thing, uh, a creature came back through the dimension, the dimension tide or whatever it's called, and gets the Megaguirus. Some kid finds the egg, takes it home with them. He decides to throw it away, but since the garbage is full that day, he just kind of dumps it in the sewers. Then it starts growing and becoming its own little creature. And this thing, there's some actually like really grotesque moments in this movie, surprisingly, which I kind of like. Uh, these, this, this young couple is like, oh, you want a beer? Yeah, I'm going to go get a beer. So they go to get this beer. One of the dudes gets, like, uh, straight up murdered, like, all bloody and gory and shit. And then, like, this other girl gets murdered, all bloody and gory and shit. So it's surprisingly gory for a Godzilla film this time around. And, yeah, so that, that aspect I like. Then the things start to hatch and then it starts to, like, flood the city, form little swarms. They try and fight Godzilla at one point. And there's some there's a neat moment where some girl actually gets to ride Godzilla. The effect looks terrible, by the way. Which the CGI in this film. Oh, God. Ooh, the CGI looks really, really bad. You know, I can find some charm in practical effects, but really bad CGI is really, really off-putting, and there's a lot of really terrible CGI special effects within this, uh, within this movie. Uh, it just does not, it does not look very good at all. It just, it's really bad. I, I'm sorry, I, I can't even fathom, like, how bad some of the CGI in this film is. But, yeah, so a lot of the CGI looks atrocious in this film. Not very, very good. So, but yeah, it's definitely um, something to rip on. But anyway, so the, there's like a swarm that attack Godzilla. They don't really do much. They kind of bite him like mosquitoes. And then they like, you know, take this nuclear energy, give it to Megaguirus. And the Megaguirus forms to fight Godzilla. And Megaguirus as an opponent isn't really that. Like, come on, look at this thing. Like, you I mean, do you really expect this thing to be a serious threat to Godzilla? Like, Godzilla just fought Orga, who's this big burly kaiju, and then he has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this little tiny Megaguirus thing. Granted, Godzilla's fought Mothra in some 
better battles. But that was the show era, and this is the millennium, so we expect, it's kind of like when you're watching Dragon Ball, or Dragon Ball Z, where it's like, Goku, like, those, like, the, the older opponents, like Raditz, and, well, I mean, Vegeta obviously evolved as that, like, Raditz and Frieza, well, Frieza got stronger again, too, but it's dumb it. But, like, if you go back in, you watch, like, kind of how the older opponents were, and they were intimidating at the time, but once you've gotten past, like, that level, like, once you've upgraded, like, Super Saiyan 2 or 3, some of these older opponents just don't seem that intimidating anymore. So that's kind of where I'm at with some of these Godzilla opponents. Like, okay, once you fought something as powerful as, like, King Ghidorah and that, it's like, it's just like, we just don't expect anything to really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Godzilla at this point. Megaguirus is kind of that way. The fight between them, though, I did find some entertainment value in. There's some really cheesy, hokey moments, and there's some bad special effects that really kind of put you and take you out of it, but there's some funny-ass moments. The funniest part in this whole movie is where Godzilla does this big, giant jump, where it's just like he just leaps onto Megaguirus and he goes flying through the air and it felt straight out of like the Showa era. So I kind of like those aspects where it goes a bit cheesy and kind of hokey like that. I got, I got a good laugh out of it. There's a part where Megaguirus like basically stabs Godzilla clear in the like stomach or the dick and he's just like, oh! You can just see the look of expression on his face and it is pretty funny. Uh, Megaguirus has like this little energy beam thing that he fires at Godzilla. Godzilla takes him down eventually and a rather unique fight, like, we get to see some more, Godzilla actually used, gets to use his tail some more, his dorsal plates, his weapons, I like that bit of it, too, the fight between them, Megaguirus has to use, like, uh, her speed advantage, and it's just, I think it's a she, yeah, I think it's a she, Megaguirus is a she, if I believe, yeah, gotta use their speed advantage to try and take down Godzilla, but ultimately, once you're caught by Godzilla, it's just not gonna go well for you, and Godzilla blows her to bits, then once that's done, the cities, like, uh, they fire their Dimension Tide Weapon, I think that's what it's called. Like I said, I just watched this movie, but it's so, like, kind of forgettable, with only a few moments that I enjoyed. Um, he uses and fires that device, and Godzilla seemingly disappears. Then, that seems to be it. Then we get a post credit scene where Godzilla just is roar is heard, and they never followed up on it. They made the much better GMK afterwards. But, yeah. Oh, another aspect I really like about this film, the music. Godzilla's 2000 score was just kind of okay to me. Like, the classic Godzilla themes are good in there, but the rest of it so so but this one the main composer would come back for Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla Mecha Godzilla Mothra Tokyo SOS or whatever but the music in this film is really really good I, I think the score is what really helps elevate this film more than it needed to be so the score is great there's a few enjoyable Godzilla moments but Godzilla's design I still can't stand this design I think it's one of the ugliest looking designs I've seen um the score is good. There's some a few enjoyable moments in this one, but overall, it's just it really is kind of a drag of a movie. Uh, there's poor special effects, like really bad CGI at times. And I understand they don't have the biggest of budgets, but GMK managed to do its, its special effects a lot better than this one. Like this one just comes across as like, and it's not like a charming thing because like so this, you would think it would be getting better as you go along, but no. Like once you start relying on like really poor CGI, it just doesn't hold up well, because, like, like, the Heisei series didn't really need CGI to, like, make its movies of good quality, and, like, if you can't do it well with CGI, just go back to practical, I mean, it's, they've been doing practical this entire time, like, you don't have to use some garbage looking CGI in your movie, but they did it anyways, so, yeah, the Millennium series, we're not off to a really good start in the Millennium series with this one, like I said, the, the human leads, the human cast is really bland. There's nothing really, like, that stands out amongst them. Like, we have this kind of female pilot who's, yeah, like, something happened to her years ago where, like, her, I don't know, her sergeant or whatever military guy who saved her, like, she feels guilty over. But she's just not that interesting of a protagonist. I mean, they did the same thing kind of in, like, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, but, like, the actress in there was, uh, much more, her character was more interesting than this person. But, yeah, like, this one is just kind of a really forgettable weak Godzilla film, and pretty much everybody who watches it just, like, I've never met anybody who goes, Godzilla vs. Megaguirus is my favorite Godzilla film. I don't think you'll ever really, unless you're, like, unless it was somebody who worked on the movie or started it, but I, I never really meet anybody who really, really, really likes this one, and it, it's easy to see why. Uh, personally, I don't think it's the worst of the Millennium series. I actually prefer this one to Godzilla 2000, because there's a few more entertaining bits for me. Granted, Godzilla 2000 has Kataguri and Orga were much better, but I don't know, there's something about this one where I can watch it, and I'm like, okay, I enjoy this one slightly more. I, I think it has to do with maybe some of the horror elements to it, like where the people get, like, horrifically murdered, like, early on, and we get a pretty, like, funny 
entertaining battle at the end of it, but Godzilla 2000, it's just, this one and 2000, or maybe that, like, 2000 a bit more, I don't know, like, this one and 2000 are kind of neck and neck for me at, like, the bottom of the Godzilla uh, franchise, at least in terms of live action ones, they're definitely, like, really down low on the list, and I just don't find myself wanting to go back and rewatch this one, that's why when I get to the Millennium Series, like, oh, man, the last three Godzilla films, like, the, the worst stretch of Godzilla films is, like, this, and then, I guess, it's, I'd say, like, in close proximity would be, like, the animated series, but yeah, like, the worst stretch of live-action Godzilla films was Godzilla 1998 to Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Like, I, I can't think of a stretch that's, like, any worse than this, but yeah, so, yep, those are my thoughts on Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Like I said, I'm not too big a fan of this one. I think it's just scraping near the bottom of the barrel in terms of Godzilla films. Thankfully, the next couple Godzilla films are really solid, especially the one after this. It's like, we had to lower the bar so much. Like, you lower the bar so much, then you go straight into the next one. It's like, wow, look at this actual effort. Good special effects for, like, the budget that they had. They made it look as good as possible. Great use of Godzilla. Great design. Great horrifying elements. Great score. Like, everything just clicks in the movie after this one. So, I guess if you're a pure collector, get this one. Check it out. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section down below. And, uh, yeah, hit that bell for notifications. Subscribe to the channel. Come back tomorrow as we get to talking about the amazing GMK, arguably my favorite Godzilla film ever made. And, uh, yeah, we'll do that. So, thank you all so much for watching. It's been fun. Take care now. Bye-bye then. I'll see you next time.